We gotta welcome Crazy Bob back to the microphone since he certainly doesn't know how to play pool. My lord, that was terrible. Hard to watch such bad pool. All right, what we're going to have here is Dan Field versus Derek Ferranda for the hot seat. All right. We've been looking forward to this match all day. Uh, I guess I lost my glasses. So, let's see what we got. I need to order some food. All right, these are people warming up here. I might see if I can find me, myself a waitress, get me some of this great O'Brien's food. We are at O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill, Sports Bar and Grill for the Fives and Under Eight Ball Tournament of a Lifetime. It is the November 4th, 2017 O'Brien's on, no, it's not on cue, Dan, uh, I can't remember all the people who who did it. Dan, Tyler, Ryan, Ronnie Classic. There we go. I got them all. I'll tell you what. Anybody who just got through watching me play watched one of the finest matches that you'll ever see. All right. I'm lying. But it was terrible. But it, it was fun to play. Okay, it was terrible. It was terrible to play, too. Never mind. I'm going to take it all back. Yeah, I just couldn't do anything. But it was terrible. But it was a lot of fun. Ha! All right, looks like Dan won the flip. That means he's racking and breaking while I'm looking for a waitress. If you see a waitress flag... If you see a list of flag her down for me. These guys did this on their own. Yeah, this is the... The Dan Tyler Ronnie Ryan Classic. Fives and under tournament for eight ball in beautiful East Side Evansville, Indiana at the O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. This is the match for the hot seat. The winner of this match will wait for me to come out of the loser's bracket. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so. One of my shots took 73 minutes, literally. Well, that's what happens there, Nate. When you play this bad, you got to think a long time how to miss a shot as badly as I do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, here it comes. This is the match we've been waiting for. Dan's been playing really solid today. He takes a softish side break, gets a side a ball into the side pocket. Believe the hype, Courtney says. This is a teammate on teammate action you got there. Alright, I don't know what Dan's gonna do here. 
Might have the six ball up the table. I don't know. I don't know what he's got. He's actually got kind of a mess here. Yeah, it's open, but what's he trying to do here? Carry him off the five? Six in the corner. Yep. There you go. Really bad on watching the screen. Oh, come on. Make it believable, Nate. We got to welcome Crazy Bob back to the microphone since he certainly doesn't know how to play pool. My lord, that was terrible. Hard to watch such bad pool. All right, what we're going to have here is Dan Field versus Derek Ferranda for the hot seat. All right. We've been looking forward to this match all day. Uh, I guess I lost my glasses. So, let's see what we got. I need to order some food. All right, these are people warming up here. I might see if I can find me, myself a waitress to get me some of this great O'Brien's food. We are at O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. Sports Bar and Grill for the fives and under eight ball tournament of a lifetime. It is the November 4th, 2017 O'Brien's on, no, it's not on cue. Dan, uh, I can't remember all the people who who did it. Dan, Tyler, Ryan, Ronnie, classic. There we go. I got them all. Can I get something to eat? No. Cheeseburger, fries, my sauce. All right. Another water. Another water. Now, that's something you don't see every day. I get my sauce. That's what I order here. I order my sauce. I've been trying to get off the sauce, but as it turns out, I just can't help myself. All right. Looks like he's going to have a bank, I assume, for the eight. Did he call it? Oh, he's cutting it. Risky shot. And he's going to pay for that risk. Ball in hand for Derek Ferranda. 
That's something to point out a little bit. A scratch on the eight is not a loss of game. It is actually just ball in hand, a foul like on any other ball. All right here. I think he'll draw back off of this ball into the nine or into the side rail, uh, side rail for the nine, I mean. And that'll leave him pretty automatic for the eight, just assuming he makes this ball. Thank you very much. Here, can you take this for me? I'm trying to quit. All right, and he rattles the ball. That's going to be a that's going to be the game I think for Dan on this one. Maybe I'm a little early on the score. It is wreck your own. Hey, Boyer, Rusty wants uh, best two out of three in chess for $50. Tonight? I don't know. As far as you're uh, wanting uh, best two out of three in chess, then uh, Boyer's asking tonight? All right, Dan Field takes the lead of the first rack. I've got a cheeseburger on the way here at lovely O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. Sitting here with my friends and Cam at the scorer's table. Peace. Two? What is two? Only is two? No. It looks like every ball on the table went, but he picked up the cue ball, and that's a foul. I guess it was going to scratch. But it was kind of in the way we couldn't see it, so. Oh, my God. Who put this catch up here? My God. <laughs> Take that away. My God. Don't they know? They're trying to get in my head. If you'd have played better, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You'd be playing. <laughs> All right. Rusty says not tonight. You guys take it offline. This is the greatest match of the history of fives. Up until the uh, I come through the loser's bracket and snap this mother off. Two former world champions duking it out. That's right. That's what we got here. World APA champions. Well... And one of them is an APA third place in nationals. Here comes Dan Field. He has rolled through every opponent today imaginable. You heading out, Mickey? Nice shirt. You still haven't got me one. You said you had one for me. Fuck. I do not have one. What? Was I drinking? I guess. I don't know. I'll tell you what, I need some more vodka. Put the kid in the mix. I know. I wanted fire water. If they poured that. If that was their bourbon or their vodka or whatever, I'd have, dread, I'd have been ordering them all day. Yeah. I'd have been laying on the ground by now. All of my horses are still in. Who'd you buy? I think. Dennis, you still in? Yeah, he's playing. Who did you buy, Bob? Dennis and Logan McElroy. We're all in the loser's bracket. Well, everybody except for these two playing's in the loser's bracket. So. And it's not good. Because I should be playing. Oh, no, I shouldn't be. I play so terrible. Catch up emergency to broadcast booth. It, it was one. It's actually been alleviated. We had, uh, I had some of my, uh, 
staff come and take care of the catch-up problem here. Nate says, I didn't know Bob drank until I saw him sober. You know what? That is true. <laughs> if you knew how many times people have told me that, you would be surprised. No, you wouldn't be surprised at all. I tell you what, the way everybody talked about you when I met you, I thought you'd be taller, Nate. All right, we got Dan Field on the table taking one difficult shot here. We don't know what he's going to do. He's probably going to hide up behind the eight ball. I don't see any other shot. He might bank it back towards the four ball. I don't know. He might just uh, pick up the cue ball and throw it at Derek. You just never know. Sometimes you try to prognosticate what these players are going to do and and it's hard. Okay, this was the hide behind the eight ball option. Don't think he got there. I think he's going to be able to see a little bit of that. Maybe the different view might help us a little bit. Maybe that view makes it worse. All right, we got 69 viewers right now. Happy meal. I was over 80. Oh, now it's 77. Keep sharing it with all your friends. This is the championship match. No, it's not. It's actually just a hot seat match. They're still waiting for me to come out of the loser's bracket. It was. All right, Derek gets a nice shot here on that uh, four ball into the side pocket. I think he's got a, some pretty good shape here on this. I think he's going to go 7-1-5. Little draw shot on the five to get back on the eight. Stop shot. Little stop shot. Let me roll up just a hair. You know what I love about this match? Both are students of mine. Aha! And it looks like he's going to have a straight in shot for the eight. Derek Ferrana could make a straight in eight ball shot just as well as any five in the city. All right, that makes it 1-1. What we have here is a battle of the titans. Some of the toughest players in the history of mankind. We are talking about world champion versus world champion. World champion on world champion action. Right here at O'Brien's on the on Q Broadcast Network. This is Crazy Bob announcing, waiting for his chance to come back out of the loser's bracket and bust some heads. <laughs> If anybody saw my match, I want you to erase that out of your memory. You know, kind of like Men in Black. They come and they press that little thing and the light comes. I want that to happen. Because you're all going to be surprised when I come back out of the loser's bracket like a phoenix. Rising from the ashes. Coming to take what is mine. All the money. And the glory. I don't know how much money. We probably should figure that out. In fact, I'm gonna spend, I've spent more money on Calcutta here today than any human being should be allowed to. All right, Dan takes a shot at the side pocket here. He ends up getting a stripe in the bottom, uh, top left-hand uh, pocket according to your screen, but I'll change the screen view so that just confuses you. All right, he's got a 13 ball in the side pocket. It's pretty available. He's got some difficult uh, difficult balls here. The 10 ball is looking like it's a lot of trouble. 15 ball is not the best thing in the world. The nine ball looks pretty easy, pretty much from anywhere on the table. Now he's got this, uh, ah, who knows what ball that is. 13? I don't know, I'll say it's the 13. Who cares, we're playing eight ball. Only number you need to know is the one on the eight. All right, so what's he going to do with this ball? Is he just rolling that up there? That's going to be ball in hand, folks. What we have here is a burger with Bob sauce. Thank you. Oh, can I get some fixings? Onion, pep, onion pickle, lettuce? 
Mustard? Season on the fries? Oh, life is good. Anybody want to hear me eat? Oh, I love the chipotle sauce. Woo! Can you smell the hotness there, folks? What happens is every time I eat, woo, it's hot. Folks, it's hot. Woo. I got a stench in the mouth. Woo. That about burned me up. You can't say their fo cold, uh, food comes out cold. Oh, man. Ooh, that's hot. I think I'm going to wait for this pool action to cool down as long as, as well as my food. All right. He was trying to do that without knocking that six back behind that uh, ball there. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh oh, but I even got tomato for my trouble. Thank you. So he definitely breaks out the six ball in that shot. Seven ball still has trouble. He's saying, Dan, can you get out? And the answer is coming up shortly. Ooh, I like all of this. I, don't, I like all of this. I'm putting together my burger. Let me tell you a little bit about this. It's got uh, American cheese, pickles, onions. All right, so he's not going to get out here. He's going to go ahead and roll up table. I think he was trying to hide him there a little bit, but with that seven ball kind of in jail, I mean, he's going to have to get a pretty good leave to get something for that. A two ball's not too difficult or not too hard either or easy either. Ooh, that sauce is hot too. That's not a bad stab. It's a hard thing to get to over there. Mmm. Mmm, Courtney, this is for you. Mm -hmm. Here's a big old bite of a burger. <laughs> I'm trying to win my last longer bet with uh, Mike Belton. Let's take a vote. Who wants to hear me eat? Follow 
pour compter, je vois.
Going up for sale. I gave them the option to hear me eat, <laughs> and they said no. Because <laughs> I still got come through the losers back at Winter Thing. I shot against Derek. That was terrible. Worst I've shot in a long, a way all day. <laughs> Me and Derek both played terrible the first two games. And I just out terrible them. I'm going to do the uh, BCA term at the end of the month. I don't know if I might do that. I might come in. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to be out of town. Crazy Bob is back after he has filled his belly with burger and fries. Courtney married uh, Derek very specifically so she could tell him he plays bad. According to Courtney. <laughs> what I missed while I was nom, 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 nomming. All right, Dan is going to make use of every little bit of that pocket to get that nine ball to go, leaving himself straight in on this ball down at the corner. Probably get a little stop shot here to leave for the 10, or just draw it back just a hair, leave for the 14 or whatever the hell that ball is. Well, because he got. As long as he gets to the right side of this 10 ball, he could draw back for this uh, 8 ball pretty easily. He played a little fast and loose.
He absolutely is. Looks like he's playing top uh, left on this. Oh, I mean top right. That's why the other ball was a bad ball. That's going to leave him probably with the bank here to the corner, I'm assuming. He's probably going to think about the side pocket at least. I'm not sure. I didn't see what he called. But I'm assuming this is the... Uh, Now Derek has to get out with ball in hand with three balls to go. This should be a pretty automatic out for someone of Derek's. Everything's delayed. Sound is with this. And then when they go, it all plays at the same time. All right, everybody out there, we'd like to ask you to go ahead and do a uh, real solid for us and go ahead and share this again. Uh, people haven't shared it in a little bit, and we just want to make sure that uh, everybody out there who might want to watch this uh, championship battle here between the best fives of the history of mankind gets a chance. They can only do that if share. Only you can share this. I tell you what, I was a 5-2. I still am. But I'm not a championship level 5. I'm just a mediocre 5. <laughs> but here we go. This is what it's all about. A white ball sitting on a blue playing surface with nothing happening. This is what we've been waiting for all day, folks. Let's get a different view of this. There's someone's feet. <laughs> All right, there goes someone walking past. There's Dan picking up a rack. There's Dan pulling more balls out onto the Blues playing surface. What we have here is excitement to no end. This is the November 4th, first tournament in the history of the Ryan, Dan, Tyler, Ronnie partnership to bring five and under tournaments like this to a world near you. January's the next one. You need to come out to O'Brien's and get in the mix. We Yeah, they got another one coming in January. This isn't the last one. This is the first one, but it ain't the last. We have David English joining in the viewership. He wants to share this with everybody he's ever met just to let them know what a five should shoot like right here. David English, this is the match to see. This is for the hot seat. This is to guarantee yourself to be in the money. We've got Brindy Reed who hadn't uh, hasn't shared this yet. Sharing is caring. We have Frank Ulrich who hasn't shared this yet. Sharing is caring. We have Courtney Ferranda, who hasn't shared this yet. Sharing is caring. And we have TJ Hammond. Oddly enough, we have Steve Boyer, who's sitting behind me watching. Anyway, we're going to see Dan. Dan is shooting really, uh, really pretty solid pool here. Courtney saying, yes, she has. But that was so long ago, you need to share it again. Sharing is caring. James Wheeler, he could share it too. What you... Hey, Dennis. Dennis. No, you're making it up. Are you serious? We gonna meet, baby. We gonna meet. Derek. The hell just happened here, folks. <laughs> that ain't good. The screen just went black. I didn't know what was going on. No, I played like dog shit. 
I played like dog shit. Derek played like dog shit the first two games, but I played like dogger shit. Yeah, you can. You can play worse than. What? What? Oh, the jetpack? Oh, we're running on battery power here. We don't know what's going to happen. Oh, Happy Meal, 69%. Anyway, I did play absolutely terrible, but that doesn't mean I have to continue playing terrible. All right, Derek's going to miss that ball. I don't know what he's trying to do. All right. You're supposed to, you're supposed to knock my guy out. I. We gotta welcome Crazy Bob back to the microphone since he certainly doesn't know how to play pool. My lord, that was terrible. Hard to watch such bad pool. All right, what we're going to have here is Dan Field versus Derek Ferranda for the hot seat. All right. We've been looking forward to this match all day. Uh, I guess I lost my glasses. So, let's see what we got. I need to order some food. All right, these are people warming up here. I might see if I can find me, myself a waitress, get me some of this great O'Brien's food. We are at O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. Sports Bar and Grill for the fives and under eight ball tournament of a lifetime. So he's probably thinking about trying to come down here on this ball. As it turns out, he's not going to get it. He rattles the uh, 10 ball off of the side pocket. And that puts Dan back at the 8 ball. And he gets it. 
That puts Dan Field on the hill. Dan's playing really strong today, but Mike Powell's, Mike Powell's asking how I did. And Jenny uh, is also asking how uh, Derek did. No, he's saying, she's saying good luck, Derek. Well, Derek beat the ever-living pants off of me. So there is that. Uh, I got to the uh, semifinals of the winner's bracket, and uh, – Derek beat me and to get to this match that we're watching right now. So I'm still in the in the tournament. It's not done yet. I'm waiting to come back and beat the pants off of whoever I get a hold of. I've got uh, retribution to exact. All right, it's Derek's rack and break. It's Derek's rack and break. This is a good picture of the back of Derek's head. We can switch over there and look at uh, someone's uh, feet. Derek's going around to go get his break cue. This is insightful commentary. And coming at you is Derek's break. Down two to three. He gets the seven ball in the top left-hand corner on your screen. He's got a fairly open table if he goes for stripes. The only real trouble ball is the uh, 15. Now, we are playing a BCA format here, and that means it is open after the break. He is going to go in. Oh, but he misses the 10 ball into the bottom corner. That's going to leave a mark. That's not the kind of shot that you want to start off with. There still is that problem with the uh, 15 ball. And the 15 ball is not that terrible, but it's it's just something he has to take into consideration here early in the rack. He'll have to judge his pattern on where he wants that ball to go. He's going to get uh, either ball here, but I think he's going to go ahead and take the, the uh, maybe that wasn't the 15. I don't know what these balls are. I think he thinks the 15 might go into the side pocket. If it goes to the side pocket, that is a fairly easy ball to make. And roll up. You can't make a big comeback without being behind. Now, he draws back, and I think he was trying to get it to 15 in the side pocket, but he ended up leaving himself to nine, so that's going to work. All right, he rattles the nine, going for the uh, corner pocket. And he is going to need this combo at some point. So he's got to at least take a, take a look at this combo right now. I don't know if he's going to take it. I just think he needs to take a look at it. He's going to have a better angle on that than I do, than we do here at home. I would like to uh, welcome everybody who's watching. I wish they would go ahead and share this with all their friends. This is the OnQ Broadcast Network. Crazy Bob here. One month away from traveling to Belize today. Playing some pool, hanging out with some great folks. We've got Ryan Kelly, Ronnie Brown, Dan Field, Tyler Cordova put together one hell of a tournament. Like I said, he needed to look at this combo, and it didn't end up going. But I tell you what, he's if that if that 15 ball does not go in the side pocket, Dan's going to still struggle with this. Because that moves the eight ball in the path of the corner pocket that he could have used before. Now, keep in mind, Dan is ahead 3-2, to two and he's on the hill. So the pressure's really on Derek at this point. All right. <laughs> 
So, if he's going real aggressive here, he might uh, draw off of this nine ball, make a combo, come into the one ball to try to get on this 15. I don't necessarily expect him to do that. I think he'll come down and, and shoot the uh, ball in the corner pocket, but we'll see. It's hard to tell. It's hard to get inside the mind of a pool player, especially a five. Look at this guy. I've seen you forever. David James come up behind us. DJ rocking this stuff. Ah, there we go. That's what they all tell me. I'm gonna. My only hope of getting in the uh, BCA Hall of Fame is as is as a contributor to pool, and that would be the greatest pool commentator in the history of the game. All right, he might be going rail first here to try to no no uh, well. Everything I say is wrong, though. That's the only problem with my getting in the uh, Hall of Fame. But it's entertaining. That's what we keep telling me. That's why I keep telling myself. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to do. He's going to try to get a breakout, come across the table for this breakout. I think that's what he's going to have to do. He's got the angle. He's going to have to clear the uh, path of the uh, of the cue stick to come across. Let's see. And he didn't get the angle he wanted on that. That is going to actually put Derek in a really strong position for the rest of this rack. <laughs> Assuming the miracle kick shot does not come into fruition for him. I'm feeling good even though I just got the pants beat off of me by Derek Ferranda. I still have life in me. Getting a little rest here. Sitting down, talking to you fine folks. On part of the On Cue Broadcast Network here at O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. The greatest little fives and under eight ball tournament you will ever see. Some of the best action in the history of mankind is right before your eyes. You can't do better than this. All right, this kick is not for the fate of heart. He might be starting to think about other options, but I think he's going to go for the kick. I mean, you know, why not? He's up He's up three to two. He could take this stab. He gets the break on the next one. I think he's got to go for this. He does get a good hit, which that makes a big difference. Also tied up the five ball quite a bit, but that's going to make it easy, really easy to get a safety for uh, Derek Veranda here. All right, we got about 55 people watching this thing. Share it with your friends. Sharing means caring. Share it with your enemies. Share it with me. But I'm already watching because I'm here live in living color. All right, he might take a couple of balls off here, then play a safe and get the exact angle he wants on this uh, five ball. He's in no real danger, even if he misses balls and leaves a, a shot. I mean, he's just not, not any really dangerous, so that's that's not a terrible shot. Dan doesn't really have anything here. I mean, he could try a miracle bank. The only thing I see is like a miracle two-rail bank. I, I, I don't think he's even got that. And because Derek has balls on both sides of the table close to the pocket, it's really hard for him to do any kind of safety. When you get down to one ball versus a, a learned opponent, what happens is you run into a situation where um, your opponent is able to hide you even when he's not trying to. We've got part of the Derek fan club here with Jenny Ryder. So he's breaking that ball out, and I don't know if I agree with that shot. It does put a little pressure on Derek to try to start getting out, but as long as he leaves it on the top half of the table, Dan really doesn't have much to shoot at. Derek is pretty firmly in control of this game. 
Now keep in mind, jump sticks are of, able to be used in this tournament. So when he thinks of a safety shot, he has to consider that. That's why he's probably going up this, and I would assume he's going to do this with uh, top. He doesn't want to give Dan a chance of uh, some miracle shot to go ahead and win it. Can I get a refill of water, too? And maybe some limes? Limes in it. I want limes in my water. All right, that's going to leave him in good shape on the four ball. Come one rail, try to get on the two. If he doesn't get there, he'll have the eight. I mean, the uh, three on the uh, top right-hand corner. I think he'll have either ball. And I think if I'm him, I, try, I, try, I go ahead and take that two right here. Uh, actually, I don't know about that. All right, dude, good luck. I'm trying to watch from home. All right. I'm just starting to fall asleep, so it's time to get. Get while the getting's good. All right, Derek's got a real touch shot here. He's got to kind of slow roll this because the tables are pretty fast. And that gives him a really good angle on this uh, two ball to come off the end rail and really do what he wants to with it. He can choose to spin it with different uh, different methods. He hits it a pretty good shot here, uh, almost the perfect speed to get him straight in on the eight ball on the bottom right-hand corner pocket. All right, that's going to tie it up. Three to three. This for the hot seat. This has gone down to the wire. It all boils down to one game. What a fantastic tournament. What a conclusion of the winner's bracket. Everything on the line. The winner of this match is guaranteed second place. And anybody coming out of the loser's bracket has to beat him twice or double dip him as they say in pool parlance. What we've got here is an exciting match between two heavyweights, between two of the greatest fives in the history of the world. We're talking world champion on world champion action. It comes down to this. Dan Field takes the break. Moves a penny. And here it goes. All right, he gets a pretty good spread there, but nothing falls down, leaving an opportunity for Derek Ferranda to step in and steal this match. Just looking at the spread offhand, I think... Uh, I think there's a case to be made for both sets of balls here. hard to say what he goes after here if he takes the two ball the first shot he takes is gonna have to be a pretty precision leave to leave on the next ball if he takes the ten ball he's got a little more options with that angle he takes the nine ball that clears the way for the ball behind it so there's a lot of different options here he's gonna go ahead and take that uh, tough leave shot I was just saying and he left himself kind of a tweener shot he can back cut the five into the side, or he can, and that's going to let the cue ball loose a little bit. Oh, or to take the seven into the corner. I guess I didn't see that. And that actually is a very good shot because it actually blocks the hole for the uh, nine ball, which is its natural home. In fact, it's the, uh, uh, it's a pretty good shot for, in a lot of reasons. I, I don't know that he's he's too upset by that. The nine might be able to pass rail first though on that by that seven in the corner though. All right, he comes back up to get all of his options by leaving it in the center table. Let's see what Dan decides to do. All right, he's going to go into the side pocket with the 13 ball. This might be where he takes that stab at the 9, going rail first to get around the 7. Now, he can make a decision to not actually even go for it, but just to kind of knock his ball in. But I think he's going to try to go around it, and that's exactly what he did. All right. The six ball 
is the question. The story of this match is this six ball. What can he do to get shape on this six ball? Mike Powell's asking if this will be over tonight. This will absolutely be over tonight. In fact, it's a... Uh, it, oh, that's how you get on the six ball. Just make the nine that blocked it. What a shot by Derek Ferranda. Everything is in the open. Seven ball, what is that? All right, the seven ball, he could roll up, leave perfect on the six. He could leave just a stop shot here if he wants for the five of the side. Or he could draw back and make sure he's got a good angle for, the, for things. Which is probably what I would do. Oh, wow, he's taking the five ball here. This is actually a dangerous shot in a way. Because if he didn't have the right speed, it, it, it could become trouble. He comes back across. I think he's got an angle. He probably will take uh, inside and come up table here. Ah, uh, he might not. No, he, he probably... Well, that's what he is doing. Now, if he draws back on this shot, he should take it back over to the side pocket in front of the three. He's giving himself a pretty steep cut, though, here. And this is, uh, is going to be kind of a gut check shot, especially when all the money's on the line here. And he ends up going rail first and uh, bringing it out. And that's going to put Dan firmly in the driver's seat of this rack. He's keeping that uh, purple ball up at the top of the rack there to if he has to get into trouble, I think. I, I mean, it's hard to say, but he also wants to use that as a key ball to get on the eight ball. Now, this is a decision to make here. I don't know. He could take the 10 ball down in the bottom left-hand corner and not worry too much about the, the three ball because of that. But... Who am I to question it? I'm the one who got beat by Derek Ferrando. He comes off the end rail, comes pretty solidly in for the uh, ten ball, but he might have to, he might be too straight and might have to come up underneath this this next ball. The uh, eight ball goes in both side both corner pockets, so that should be pretty good. He's going to go top and probably come off the end rail here. I thought he wanted to hit a little harder, come off the end rail, and come back up. This is actually a pretty tough shot. But he will have enough angle to come across table, so he's going to only give Derek a, a, a bank at this shot if he misses. And miss he did. But like I said, that gives Derek a bank shot only. And what we have here is the eight ball is pretty well covered by the uh, pocket that he's after. So Derek needs to probably move the eight ball with a bank shot making in the bottom right-hand corner. And like I said, it's a gut check shot. Now he might try to safety him up behind this eight ball. That's another option. How'd you do, Logan? Hiding. Damn. Um, it took a minute because we had to cut new lines. Yeah. Oh, I got nothing but time. That's what I'm talking about. I got fresh limes here at O'Brien Sports Bar and Grill. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I tell you what, he can make a little dink safety on this uh, on this three ball. That's probably what I would do in this situation. If he just barely dinks this uh, three ball, just like this, he's going too deep into, oh, that's gonna work pretty well. I think he's gonna have enough to get off of the end rail though, to try to get a, sh a stab at this shot. He was trying to get himself uh, locked pretty good on that. I think he hit it a little too full. Nice dab, Logan. Now my only horse left is me. <coughs> hey, but I'm a pretty good horse, baby. Nice job. Way to compete. I don't know. You have to talk to them. I, I probably could figure it out for you.
Who'd you just get beat by? Paul, yeah. Big Paul. I don't know. You got, you, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably top ten. Still got a little ways to go. All right. Dan is still thinking about this shot. It is such an important shot. He's got room to get across on this. Uh, and he plays the straight safe. I think that's I think that's the right move. So Derek is going to, I'm a little surprised he's not, I'm a little surprised he was not taking a jump there. Why not jump that shot? Yes. Hill, hill. Dan just rattled the, the 15 ball in the top or whatever ball it is. 11 ball. He may have rattled that ball, but I tell you what, it is not an easy shot for Derek here. He's going to try to bank around, but I think the eight ball's in the way. So he might. He might consider cutting the ball and making Dan's 11 ball and trying to come up table and being on the right-hand side of the table. So he'd have to shoot through the three ball to make it in the hole. That's exactly what he's trying to do. All right, that puts Dan in a, a just a gimme shot for this 11 ball, but he needs to draw back enough to get the shot for the uh, for the eight ball. He does that pretty good. He's got a little bit of a back cut here. Not too difficult. Uh, Nate saying, that's a nice hit. I'm assuming he's talking about Dan's rattling of the ball in the corner pocket. There it is. Dan gets the win and takes the hot seat. Derek Ferranda gets to sit down for a little bit. Let's find out who we've got here coming next for you. We're up to 85 uh, watchers here, or viewers, whatever you say. Derek. This is not the end of your uh, tournament. You come down to the loser's bracket and await the rest of us to come back and find you. All right, while we got a little bit of this time left, we've got uh, Jason Hancock, Alan Martin, Crazy Bob, Tyler Cordova, Big Paul, Paul Douglas, Ryan Kelly, and Mike Felton are still in this tournament. Well, of course, Dan and Derek. Nine total players remaining. Nine players who have the opportunity to take every bit of money that came in to this grand tournament. All right, let me rephrase phrase this. Tyler Cordova is playing uh, Paul Douglas right now. Ryan Kelly is playing Mike Felton. Those two meet together to, to meet each other. The winner of the match between those four gets to Crazy Bob. And we're rating uh, the winner of Jason Hancock versus Alan Martin.
Huh? That's an exciting match. <laughs>